Hello, I'm David. Hi, I'm Julie. So now we're going to do a review of Mountains Out of Mole Hills. Hopefully you've had a chance to check out our How to Play and Playthrough. So this is an abstract game where you're trying to score the most points over six rounds. So it is a 3D board. And so I'm going to move it out carefully here because this shows where we left off. Hopefully I don't topple it over. So you, you are moles underground. And as you move, you'll be adding molehills to build mountains. So whoever controls the bottom of the mountain gets those points. So this is worth, see which camera we're on here. This is worth, let me zoom out. There we go. Five points for me if I'm, if I'm this brownish red. So one, two, three, four, five. And Julie, for instance, she had this molehill and that was worth four points. One, two, three, four. So how are you getting uh, stacking those molehills? Well, you're traveling around here underneath the board. And this is the two player version of the board. There is a version where there's more spaces uh, for three and four player. This is a four by four grid. And I believe it's a six by six for the three and four player game. So as you move around, every space you move into, you add a molehill on the above. Let me see, is this centered? No, it is not. <laughs> so as the game progresses, you're adding more, more molehills to the mountain. And you can topple them. So after six rounds, you can see what her score was. And I came from behind. Julie was winning up until the very end. I was able to, in this row <clears throat> here basically take these points from her yep she had all she had these mountains yeah. right here but I was able to sneak in he stole them all and stole them all by putting my color underneath those mountains he's a so, sneaky mole yeah so I denied her points and <laughs> I got points and so you're gonna be playing cards to do that kind of like you would do in a game like Robo Rally it's you're gonna draft cards so you're gonna have five cards out per player so in a two player game you'll have 10 cards and you're going to draft four so there'll be two left over and so you'll be taking cards and then you'll take the four cards you drafted and you'll put them in, in an order that you want to but then you got to carry them out in that order so you'll, you'll see in the playthrough you can get messed up if you didn't anticipate uh running into someone else's mm -hmm. uh i gotta point it down here <laughs> You could run into the wall and not add any any uh, uh, molehills to the mountain, or you run into another player. Yep. So it's you know it's very thinky in that with that guard, and you have what's called here a rock. You can play a rock card, and you can use that on purpose to change your direction because you might not have the right cards, or you place a rock to mess someone up, and that messes up their program movement, so to speak. So uh, you can also topple mountains so in the last round you can only go five high if for instance this did get a sixth piece say julie did move underneath it and she added a molehill to that mountain well what you do is you keep the one that you added to it on the bottom and then julie gets to decide if she wants to go this direction with as it collapse as it uh is it collapsing as it uh, falls over mm -hmm. this direction so she can go this way, this way, or this way, or even off the board. She could just say, oh, all those points are gone. But what you do then, as it, oh, as it falls over, you take from the bottom. And this adds to this one. This is in the last round when you can only go five high. And if you were to add a sixth one, you take the next. I'm having trouble here. <laughs> you take the next bottom one. Add it to this one. See how I'm taking it out like this? Yeah. Add it to this one. And then these two fall off off the board. Now that's part of the strategy. Sometimes you want to make things fall off the board. So what did that do for Julie? Well, she just basically... Nothing. She, she got a point here. She denied me five, uh, five points. She added a point, though, to me here. She did add a point to herself there. And another point to yeah, you there. But she added a point to me there. So really, she denied me three points... And gave herself two points. So, in a way... I wouldn't have done that. You came out ahead because you denied me points. Yeah. 
I but might have gone the other way. The point is, making things topple over is a strategy to get points and deny people's yes. points. So you're using your drafting cards, doing programmable movement over six rounds. Every round, the turn order can change depending on who has the most uh, pieces showing. So if this was the you know, fifth round and we had to play a sixth round, I would have the, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, mountains showing with my color on top. So I say I was the first player. I could continue as the first player, or maybe I want to be second player now and make Julie first player because I have nine showing to Julie's six. six. All right. So score the most points, abstract, and it's thematic. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Let's okay. take a look at how, if you don't know how we do our reviews, uh, we take turns. We don't mm -hmm. know what each other is going to say. And then we give our rating based on the Board Game Geek rating system. Yes. All okay. Right, so I always go first. Go. All right. I think the cute, the characters are so cute. They're just, they're really very cute. Um, I even named mine Frank. And I have to admit, even though this is my third time playing it, and my second time is a two-player game, I still feel it plays better as a four-player game. Um, I mean, two players was fun. It was fine, but I think it's more fun with four. I find the theme to be kind of funny. Um, I never really thought of moles or anything, so I thought it was just a funny well, little... It's a, it's a play on words. But... Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> what else did I have? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> the cards can screw with you in a two-player game, which is very true. The first time David and I played this, just the two of us, I got hosed i there were so many rounds i didn't move at all i just sat there or i moved one little spot and maybe well, get one. Here, here's what happened i'll show you oh it was awful in that game julie didn't go anywhere yep i scored 22 points and she scored zero and we didn't even score the final because i didn't go anywhere again and i knew i was yeah. gonna lose so that was not a good game because she got hosed on that turn yep so that's the only problem with a two-player. And it could happen maybe in a four-player as could, well. It could happen in the four-player. What I, camera am I on here? There we uh, go. I don't know. <laughs> and the last thing I have to say is that I found, and we all, when we played with our friends who lent us this game, we all agreed that this part of the board, this bottom the part, is part. just way too dark. And I get it's supposed to be underground, but it's just so hard to see this, like the places you're supposed to go. And yes, there are letters here and numbers here, and they they match what's up on the top row as well. But it's still really hard to see how far you're supposed to go. And that, well, we could see better in here because we have yeah. production lighting. But if you're playing on a table with low light, it was it's really gonna, hard. It's so gonna, that was my only negative. Is just it was yeah. really dark. We had to turn on more lights. We did, when, and when we, we almost and we had our cell phones out too. I think and used a flashlight on the cell phones a few times. Yeah, to, to count. even with a lot of light on in the room. Yeah, this is not a normal lit room here no. because this is a production, you know, lighting. But uh, in a normal, we're just playing on our kitchen table. Yeah, kitchen table. All right, so let's take a look at what I had to okay. say. Okay, what do you? I'm anxious. Okay. Did you say they were cute too? Thematic abstract with educational merit. So Ooh, there's a teacher in you coming out. Okay, so being uh, a teacher of the gifted uh, uh, for many years, and I teach university courses to teachers who want to get endorsed to their gifted endorsement, uh, I would recommend this for uh, the gifted classroom and, and for any children for that matter. But uh, when I used to be an administrator, I would have added this to our collection. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, for, for kids, because kids can be identified in the visual spatial area. And this is an abstract game. This would have totally, uh, those kids would have enjoyed it. Now, all kids, I think, would enjoy this, but the oh, abstract yeah. The kids that, are, that can do visual spatial reasoning would have really loved it. It's a struggle. All right. So decent components. So mm -hmm. yeah, the pieces stack together really well here, although they can topple easily. So I don't know if that if that's a design issue because it, you'll see when we were playing, we had a couple of accidents and we had to rebuild the board a little bit. It happened a couple of times, uh, especially as it gets taller. Uh, now, the board is well built here. I'm pressing down on it. So as you can see here on the other camera, as I press down on it, it's sturdy. Yeah. Okay. It's not going to bend mm -hmm. in that regard. And we haven't had any warping issues with the uh, the desert air no. here, what happens in some games. But it is a little, uh, like I say, can top a little bit. Uh, the stands that you use, the, the, uh, the box 
as you see on the how to play playthrough, I built it. You know, it's easy. It just slides in. Yeah. You can turn over the bottom piece, you know, easy like this. And you put your components in there. And you can see on the bottom here. I don't think you can turn it that easy. Uh, well, no, but I'm saying, uh, I guess you can't say no. that's how dark it is. Yeah. You, can't, you can't even see the four player. Exactly. Three, four player version. <laughs> uh, the cards are, you know, sufficient card stock. They're decent. They'll hold up. Okay. They're not super quality, but they're not super, they're not cheap either. Right. Decent cardboard. Not the best, but not the worst. Just in between. Now, the stands are interesting. It does help you see which direction you're going well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where they point. But. Again, in, in low light, you kind of you can sometimes forget which True. Is, is that guy facing this way or this way because the way they're the way they're drawn, it can some it can be hard to see which way is their their uh, nose. But come on, look how cute they are. Yeah, they are. They're so cute. So, yeah, decent quality, decent components, easy to teach and, and plays quickly. Now we played slower because we're making sure to show you all the camera angles. So when you watch the playthrough, we're, we're showing you how we move and then how we stack. So it was, we probably would have finished in half the time if we weren't on camera. Yes. Okay. Uh, can be punishing and discouraging. So this is where I, where it's going to be really affect my rating uh, because Julie doesn't do well at abstract games and programmable movement games. This is not something that, that, because uh, if you make mm -hmm. one wrong move, you could be, as you saw in the, the previous score sheet it can be devastating yep. now i made a wrong move early on in the game that we played but i was able to come back from it but it oh, wasn't yeah. as devastating as what no, happened to you mine was so bad it was bad so, so bad. that is a negative it could be especially for somebody who's not good at these type of games they might never want to play again with yeah. uh, so just be careful who you uh the audience and if they never played this game before they, they might love it but if you know that somebody struggles with games like this, I, you might not want to uh, play it with them. So lower board readability issues. It's too dark, as Julie said, this lower board here. Yeah. Uh, they call it the underground. Too dark. They should have they should have brightened it up. And that's a shame because maybe when they sent the proofs to the to the factory, it looked great. Maybe. But if they got a preview copy, they should have changed it up. Yeah. They needed to Just lighten it up somehow. They needed to add some uh uh White or, or the border or something. No, there's a way to do it uh, in uh, uh, in design oh. and in Photoshop. It's, oh. it's, it would have taken somebody five minutes to brighten it up. Really? Yeah, it wouldn't oh. have taken any time at all. But whatever reason, they didn't do it. All right. So let's take a look at how we reviewed it. So we both said... 6.5. 6.5. Yeah. And so that's in between. We'll play it in the mood. Yep. And usually willing to play. Yeah. So for us, we don't own the game. No, this is our friend's copy. Okay. If we did own it, I know because Julie doesn't do well at these types of games, I probably wouldn't suggest it. We'd no. probably take it out when we want to play with other people. Right. And we'd have to do it when I'm not tired. Um, yeah. Because if I played this, like right now, we just finished playing and it took an hour and I'm tired. And if we were to start this game right now, I would fail miserably because yeah. I get very confused on the right going right going left the turnaround thing I mean it's just it's a lot for someone that as David was saying does doesn't do well with abstract and I do not do well with abstract. Now mind you it would only take a half hour yeah. normally and okay. I could do a half hour yeah. but still I'd be very tired and I probably would not score as high as I did today. Now so for us since we don't own it we're borrowing the copy we would buy this mm -hmm. if it was on sale. Yeah. Okay. We would not pay full price for this because of the rating. Yeah. Uh, because I know Julie doesn't like it as much. Mm -mm. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you love games like this, you're probably going to rate it a 9 or a 10. Yeah. It's and you'll solid. probably really enjoy it. It is fun. It's a solid game. It's just we're not, we're not the audience for it. Mm -mm. Uh, and so, therefore, that's why our rating is lower. Yeah. But if you love these games... You should we, get it. We do, we do recommend this. It's, Very much. It, uh, and it, it, it was fun playing with three and four players. It was. It was fun playing yeah. with four. And when the first time we played it, our friends, um, they helped me a lot with the scoring. So David could just worry about his. And after they did their scoring, they helped me with mine. Yeah. Because that's one thing I did struggle with. And I still struggle with the, the scoring. Yeah. That's okay. But it's still fun. It really yeah. is. And like I said, the little characters are really cute. So uh, <laughs> if this is your type of game, we strongly recommend it. 
because Julie's not as good at these type of games, that's yeah. why we wouldn't, uh, yeah. if it was in our collection. We it, wouldn't be playing it a lot, though. We wouldn't be playing it a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, so thanks for watching. Thank you so much, you guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. All right, take care. Bye. Bye-bye.